All right, it's 12 noon. Welcome everyone to Medicine Grand Rounds. Before we proceed with the uh, Medicine Grand Rounds, I'm Conrad Lyles and I'm here to introduce the Department of Medicine William J. Bremner Endowed Mentorship Award. So this is when we recognize our award winners for 2024. And the Department of Medicine uh, Mentorship Awards were um, created to recognize that mentorship is cr critical to the success across all phases of, of a faculty member's career. And the Department of Medicine established this, uh, mentor, the Mentorship Awards in 2015 to honor faculty members for their contribution to the scientific, educational, and patient care mission of the Department of Medicine through exemplary mentorship. And these awards are uh, now named in honor of our, uh, of our former uh, chair of the Department of Medicine, Dr. William Brimner. Each year since 2015, um, Nominations for these mentorship awards are, solic are solicited from among the faculty, especially the division heads. And uh, they are then submitted to a mentorship committee, which is chaired by uh, Dr. Nisha Bonsall from Nephrology, but also includes Dr. Paul Cornia from General Internal Medicine, Christina Crothers from uh, Pulmonary Critical Care, Neha Tashpandi from General Internal Medicine, uh, Somnath uh, Mukherjee from General Internal Medicine, Dr. May Reed from Gerontology and Geriatric Medicine, Dr. Sokol Hesner from General Internal Medicine and Dr. April's, uh, April uh, Stamping Otero from Cardiology. And I'm proud to, um, or honored to uh, announce the two recipients of this year's Department of Medicine Mentorship Awards. And those two individuals are Dr. Uh, Jan Apkowitz, who's professor and former division head of hematology and is a Clement A. Finch professor of medicine. And the second award winner is Bruce Pasady, who's professor in the Division of General Internal Medicine, professor in the Department of Epidemiology, and then he's Emeritus Co-Director of the Cardiovascular Health Research Unit. And in terms of the nominations that came in, uh, these were some quotes from the uh, nomination letters for Dr. Epkowitz, uh, uh, attesting to her skill as a mentor. I've never witnessed the type of tailored career development that Jan provides for her mentees. She's simply inspiring. She's exceptionally generous. She has unfaltering faith that important biological questions are answerable, and she made me think that I could answer them. Her support was beyond what I could have expected any time, any day. I am lucky to have such a fierce defender in my corner. She has created a culture that is inclusive, collaborative, and forward-thinking, and she has been a leader in developing uh, uh, female faculty from underrepresented uh, backgrounds, and she seems to embody hematology and academic medicine. And I'll turn it over then uh, briefly to Dr. Apkowitz to see if Dr. Apkowitz would like to uh, say a few sentences and provide some uh, further thoughts. Jan? Oh, so thanks, Conrad, and, and thank you so much. And thanks, Dr. Young. I'm, I'm really proud and, and really honored to receive this award. It's, it's quite meaningful to me as I value mentorship so much. My thanks to Dr. Herbert for nominating me and to my many colleagues who wrote the letters of support and those amazing quotes. To me, um, mentorship of trainees, but probably as importantly, mentorship of faculty is really key to academics and um, key to a productive and a, and a fun environment that we, we strive for. And I'm especially honored to receive an award that's named for Dr. Bremner, whom I consider a mentor to me and to my fellow um, former um, fellow division heads. Bill taught me to just ask, what are your goals? And how can I help you accomplish this? And I think that's something that I bring to each meeting that I have that's potentially a mentorship meeting. To be available, to be sensitive and non-judgmental, to be honest, like real honest, um, to be creative, a creative problem solver, but stay within the rules, always law abiding, and to assure confidentiality. Um, I think mentorship is about finding a path and recognizing that everyone's path is unique and I'm just so pleased to be honored in this way. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And congratulations, Jan. Thank you. And our, and our next, uh, our second uh, recipient is Dr. Bruce Posady. And he, these are some nomination quotes from Dr. Posady's uh, uh, nomination. Generous with his time, intellect and resources, accessible and highly principled, kindness and advice are, greatly, are, are graciously offered, and he derives great satisfaction from his mentee successes. He has ability to think big and provide resources for those to um, uh, pursue their careers. He cannot recall a single time when uh, Bruce considered an issue too small or insignificant for him to help offer his help. 
He always encouraged me to think broadly and pursue the questions that most excite me. He gauges his success by the success of his uh, of the folks that he mentors and derives great satisfaction from their accomplishments. And his whole approach to science on the personal and system scales is a model for incredible mentorship. So congratulations, uh, uh, Bruce. I'll turn it over to you for a few words if you'd like to uh, provide some. Yeah, thank you for the kind words for this prestigious award uh, named importantly for, uh, for Dr. Bremner and to the colleagues who nominated me. I've had the good fortune to work with outstanding members, uh, mentors myself, Tom Inouye, Jim Legerfo, Steve Finn in medicine, Noel Weiss, Tom Kepsel, and Ed Wagner from epidemiology, as well as national mentors, Kurt Ferberg and Lou Culler. In my view, mentoring is something of an opportunistic activity. It's given me a chance to work with some terrific young scientists, Nick Smith, Rosa Lemaitre, Tom Ray, Nana Sotodinia, Robert Kaplan, James Floyd, Mandy Fretz, Allison Foner. I regularly learn and benefit from working with them. Colleagues, including Susan Heckberg, David Siskovic, Ken Rice, Thomas Lumley, have participated along the way and so share some of the responsibility here. Together, we've tried to create at the UW a collaborative culture that provides mentoring, improves science, and enhances productivity. Thank you so much for this uh, uh, wonderful award. Congratulations, Bruce. Thank you. And, and now I'm going to turn over the podium to uh, Dr. Celia Herring, who's a uh, uh, chief medical resident, to introduce our speaker for today's Grand Rounds, Dr. Barbara Yoon. So um, thank you so much for that, Dr. Lyles, and congratulations, Dr. Epkowitz and Dr. Sadie for that wonderful award. Um, as Dr. Lyle said, my name is Celia Herring. I'm one of the inpatient chief medical residents here at UW Montlake, and I'm excited to be facilitating today's Grand Rounds. Today's presentation is going to be a 2024 State of the Department of Medicine update from Barbara, Dr. Barbara Young. Um, as a reminder, any questions that the audience has throughout today's session can be submitted through the chat. I'll be monitoring those questions to pose to Dr. Young at the conclusion of her presentation. And now, without further ado, I would like to add th hand things over to Dr. Barbara Young, who, as you all likely know, is an internist and a gastroenterologist with research interests in both clinical and basic research, who has been chair of the Department of Medicine here at University of Washington since 2019. Thank you very much, Celia. And again, congratulations to Bruce and Jan, who really embody uh, what we are about here at the department, and I couldn't be more proud. Um, let me start sharing my screen. So much to talk about in my state of the department. Um, this is an annual affair and something that I look forward to every year. Today, it is so exciting to talk about how we're celebrating 75 years of a department. I will talk about department finances and then delve deeply into the strategic plan, followed by a Q&A. We're celebrating 75 years. So we've done this with a plomb. We've spotlighted each of our divisions. We have featured 75 emerging leaders and 75 change makers just to show the depth and the breadth of the department. We've published a book of milestones. They're still to be had. So if you want to stop by your divisional office and get some, they're also available online. And we've had plenty of swag items that people wear proudly. Let's do the numbers. So the Department of Medicine by numbers, it is a vast department and it's growing. We have over 3,500 faculty trainees and staff, 56 adult chairs and professorships, 35 fellowships, 35 research centers, six residency programs, those are growing. We have 11 subspecialty divisions, a vast amount of inpatient and outpatient encounters, clinics, and a strong research portfolio. We've also gone through some significant, exciting structural changes. We have a newly formed division of HEME and ONC as of August 1, and the Division of Dermatology transitioned to be a department effective October 1. We fully integrated UWMC Northwest Campus on July 1, and as many of you know, the UWP non-compete no longer is in effect for all DOM faculty as of January 1, 2024. 
diving into the finances of the department. For the FY24 budget, um, and this is the year that ends uh, uh, end of June in 24, uh, we're projecting a total of funding of uh, 69 million. This is an increase of 4% over FY23. As you see in the pie chart, you, you see the different areas where this money is coming from. And I just wanna highlight that over time, we're seeing more and more of a shift, which I reported on last year already, towards clinical over research. So clinical is the, the, the darker one, um, uh, GNC and RCR is research. And then also growth in affiliate, which is mostly due to our um, growing portfolio through um, FHCC, the new Fred, Hatch, Fred Hodge Cancer Center. State and WAMI um, is noted here as 1% and is staying uh, flat. Um, it is very important to think of our revenues because we need those revenues to invest in our strategic priorities. I will talk more about that. Um, one of the big strategic priorities that I want to highlight that we've heavily invested in is addressing the gap in faculty salaries against the WAMC benchmarks. And we want to continue to improve the operating margin through economies of scale, expense reduction, and increased revenues to have more available for strategic investments. I want to talk briefly and show you our departmental operating margin. Again, I want to ground us in thinking about what an academic department means by operating margin. So basically, this is what's left over once you have the revenue and you have the expenses. Um, a decreasing margin in this case, which I'm showing here, um, was deliberate and it's reflective of the investments in strategic priorities. Um, the 2020 low revenue was the COVID year, um, and then we were very specific and deliberate with our strategic plan to invest in what's important to us. Some of the financial highlights. Um, so departmental operating margin, what's left over, includes successful annual fundraising, which many, many of you participate in. And as I mentioned, it allows for investment in strategic priorities. Um, we've started um, launching the department strategic plan initiatives in FY22. Um, we're supporting key programmatic investments. I'll go over some of those. It's also used for recruitment and retention of staff and for renovation. Overall, I'm very proud to report that it allowed the department to invest over 11 million in unit adjustments to adjust salaries over the last four years for faculty compensation. Gifts and endowments are very important. Um, I'm just showing here where we're at for this year. FY23 closed with 14.8 million in gifts from a total of 1,423 donors. And we're on track FY24 as of December 23 um, for the same trajectory. More financial highlights, notable gifts um, in order of size. And you see all divisions represented here because many of these work are done within the divisions with our advancement partners, but 600,000 uh, to allergy and infectious disease, uh, 550 um, for a professorship in Asian health and cardiology, um, TB vaccine funding in AID, um, a endowed fund for international exchange in gastroenterology um, and a pledge payment uh, to an endowed professorship uh, in honor of um, Dr. Uh, Raj Mehotra's patients, um, uh, David Otterberg. Looking at our research award amounts, uh, we pay careful attention um, to our total awards. And you see the different bar charts here with the largest one in dark purple being government funding. Um, uh, followed by industry domestic, domestic, which is the teal colored, and then association non-for-profit and foundations in light brown, and industry for, foreign with the um, uh, light blue on the bottom. And um, uh, well noted that there is um, a drop in research funding. We're watching this uh, carefully. Part of it may be that we got a big surge in COVID funding. Uh, part of it might be accounting. So we're looking very carefully um, but we were encouraged to see one other way to look at research um, uh, productivity is looking at expenditures. And we're clearly doing the work um, because the money that's coming in is being spent. With this, I want to shift to talking about our strategic plan. We started working on the plan in the summer of 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. Pandemic. We had a lot of discussions on when to launch this, but we wanted to engage 
while the depart it, the whole department and create a way to fulfill our common goals in a dynamic and changing environment. We also needed to align with system-wide clinical strategies. So we really focused on the mission critical areas to our department. We're now two and a half years in and in full implementation. And I'm so proud to present um, all what's going on around implementation to you today. While a lot of work, I could not be more happy about what we've done together to elevate our community and our impact. So as many of you know, because many of you have been deeply involved in this, um, uh, the strategic plan is comprised of key results areas, and we're now in full implementation with the work groups. I need to start out by thanking all the leads and all the members of the work groups who are con consisting of staff, faculty, and trainees who are doing this work. As you all know, with the strategic plan, we landed on four KRAs or key result areas. Lead in innovation of patient care and deliver of research, which is now two work groups that have been spun out, research and clinical innovation. KRA two is nurture a supportive collaborative culture where equity, diversity, and inclusion are at the center. This work is carried out by the equity, diversion, and inclusion work group. KRA three, invest in our trainees, staff, and faculty has two work groups, one focused on professional development and one focused on well-being. And last but not least, elevate and sustain excellence in, te in, in teaching, which is um, the work being done by the education work group. And none of this could be done without support through central coordination, um, as you see in the bottom bar. So year one accomplishments, I know I talked about some of those in my last um, grand rounds, but I just wanted to continue to highlight we had 17 delivers, deliverables for all these work groups that were completed uh, in year one. So some of the highlights, which many of you are familiar with, um, are the Bias Navigator, which is in full effect, the reconnection events we've had, the DEI lecture series. Um, we've also developed DEI hiring guides, DEI resource guide, professional development resource guide, and a, a well-being resource guide. So what's going on in year two? Um, our six work groups have identified 41 year two deliverables to achieve outcomes related to the care A's that I presented. And you see here, um, the dark purple is completed and um, um, the light color is in progress. And so all the work, all the groups are very busy working on various deliverables and benchmarking against that. On to accomplishments in order of care A's. So no mention of research this year would be complete without a huge thank you to the grants, contracts, and finance staff that have worked tirelessly in the very challenging, ambiguous, and stressful environment since July 2023 with the launch of the new finance system. I also want to do a shout out to the faculty who continue to push to do their best science in, this, in the face of sometimes significant adversity. As we're leading innovation of patient care delivery and research, we have developed a recent grants dashboard. Um, there's an example down here, which, which, will, um, which is dynamic and will show proposals, sponsor information, awards, and PI information for better communication across the department and showcasing of the work. We have reinvigorated the microbiome center with a new lead um, and things are going fantastically. And as of, I think, two days ago, um, we have committed to a biostatistics core, which will be available to departmental members, and we're extremely excited about that. We have been very busy disseminating together in all the top journals to include New England Journal, JAMA, Cell, Lancet, Nature, PNAS, JCI, Science, and many, many more. Clinically, from FY20 to today, the department has grown almost 40% in clinical FTE and will almost double work RVUs by the end of the year. Everyone has been working very hard and been very productive. All divisions have expanded. High growth areas in particular have been the hospitalists, oncology group, and cardiology. As I mentioned, we have fully integrated, integrated with the Northwest campus and we are a big part of establishing the COLED UW Medicine Transplant Institute. 
these are some of the system-wide efforts we, we are uh, involved in. Of course, we're at the front and center of increasing access across the system. We're working very hard at the OPMC and in gastroenterology to increase access. Um, we have agreements with the Red Hutch um, in AID, metabolism, medical genetics, and pulmonary critical care and sleep. Um, we're also intimately involved with the ESET expansion. We work well with other departments. Um, we've launched um, a very new service where GIM hospitalists help cover orthopedics. Um, we are working closely um, with various divisions, with family medicine and others in palliative care. Um, Heart Institute is a multidisciplinary uh, um, endeavor by nature, working closely with anesthesia and surgery. And Transplant is a partnership between surgery and medicine. We also partner with entities outside. Uh, cardiology has a strong presence at Kootenai in Idaho. Uh, we have a Spokane clinic for gastroenterology and nephrology um, has started being very active um, in Alaska looking at uh, pre-transplant patients. Moving on to CARA 2, nurturing a supportive collaborative culture where equity, diversity, and inclusion are at the center. So much more work needs to be done um, and so much work that we're already doing. Uh, I wanted to highlight a lecture series um, that has been um, done in partnership with the Institute of Common Power that Sean Greenlee helped set up. Um, and that has been hugely successful with participants from all over the US. We just had uh, a lecture series the week before last and it was amazing to see who, who came. Um, some, of the, some of the topics I posted here and they're all very timely. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, really thought provoking. Um, we've done a bunch of community engagement activities. We compiled them and posted them for easy access. And no small feat, the demographics data has finally been compiled and posted, which is so important to us. This was one big uh, benchmark that we needed as part of the strategic plan to know where we're at so we can know um, how to set um, goals for the future. The Department of Medicine Gender Equity Awards were established in 2022, and they recognize and celebrate individuals who are dedicated to supporting the su success of women and gender minorities. You see the 2023 Gender Equity Award recipients here, Monica Forthrope, Erin Cross, Judy Sui, and Lex Powers, and nominations are currently open until April 15 for the 2024 awards. For CARE 3 invest in our trainees, staff, and faculty. I have lots to report. Proud to be DOM. Department faculty, trainees, student, and staff received over 250 honors, teaching awards, and special appointments. Uh, many of you read our weekly newsletter. It is chock full of recognition of our faculty, trainees, and students, and staff across the nation. To highlight this even more, we launched the staff shoutouts. Um, to recognize outstanding work of our staff members in the department. I encourage all of you to go and peruse that page. Um, it is really wonderful. And if you work with the staff, you want to particularly recognize, shout them out. Along those lines, we presented our inaugural Outstanding Staff Award to recognize and celebrate exceptional staff members who are dedicated to supporting our organization's mission of teaching, healing, discovery, and diversity and upholding core values. We could not do the work we're doing without staff and not particularly not without those excellent staff. So again, nominations are currently open and I wanna call out Kelsey Griffin from GI, Susan Melhorn from GIM and Shinitra Pryor from Gerontology and Geriatric Medicine. Congratulations. A big focus has been getting faculty promoted. Much work has gone into this, and I'm very happy to promote to, to, to report that we continue high rates of promotion across all promotable faculty titles. Um, we've increased promotions for AY 2324 over, over previous four-year average, with the WOT tenure 21% above, clinical 62%, and volunteer doubled. The new clinical practice track creates a more appropriate set of promotion requirements for the faculty who fit that profile. Lots of work is ongoing around that and we're receiving a lot of input. 
And we've launched the DI pathway on the WT tenure track to recognize faculty contribution to diversity, equity, inclusion in all arenas, research, education, clinical care, and advocacy. To reach even more, the Leadership and Faculty Trajectory Lift Program has been created, which helps faculty, particularly women faculty, access sponsorship and individualized guidance for the promotion process. The goal is to increase preparedness for the faculty promotion process, and it's been piloted in GIM, and we're expanding to other divisions. Again, this is targeted for women faculty and open to all. We're always recruiting. I've recruited over 78 at the helm since I got here, 70, 780 uh, faculty. Here I'm just showing the recent division heads, Sarah Hervis and uh, Rena Mira, um, division administrators, Jessica Belcher, Susan Calera, Ashley Grogan, and Jennifer Morris, as well as Stratplan and Central Leadership, D'Angela Brown, Michael Dudley, Dave Green, Maureen Johnson, Zarina Sacramento, and Stefan Stewart. Welcome. We funded the Recognition Seed Fund project for a second year to support community building and colleague connection. Um, we're just showing a sample here of all the different events where people came out to celebrate and connect. We did one outing to the Seattle Sounders in 2023. And um, please join us for this year where we're gonna see the Seattle rain uh, on April 21st, um, you can go and get discounted tickets and we're gonna actually meet up beforehand um, to, re uh, to connect in a, in a separate room. So I hope to see many, many of you and your families um, as we're reconnecting at our sporting event. We have been practicing quiet weeks for a number of years, but appears this has really been taking a broader hold and acceptance, cementing our collective commitment to doing our best work in a sustainable way. It's meant to rebuild resilience and focus on mental health, um, and we continue to support this. Um, we hope that individuals can limit non-essential meetings to recharge and reflect, because we all need that time. Upcoming quiet week, very timely, April 8th through 12th and we've posted the remaining ones. More community building and professional development. We communities of practice for staff will start this year. Communities of practice are organized for staff with similar roles, like academic HR representative in different divisions or grants managers. The intent is to provide a forum where they can learn from each other, share best practices and problem solve. A staff professional development fund was created in response to a need for staff to continue to feel a possibility to grow. We hosted a gender equity lunch on career development and well-being initiatives for staff. Um, we started standardized exit interviews for staff um, as of March and faculty is coming soon. And we're very excited to have pulse surveys as a tool to provide non-laborious, timely and relevant feedback on initiatives. Even more connection development. Commensality groups have the goal to promote community and support. They're groups of six to eight faculty who meet periodically to discuss questions about challenges um, at work and for social connection. We've also invested in our own betterment as leaders and a group of leaders in the department have participated in 360 degree feedback. Um, this has provided a really amazing opportunity. I was one of the participants to learn more about themselves and receive tools to be the most effective leaders. We're planning to roll this program out to more leaders as it's been very effective and well-received. Moving on to elevating and sustaining excellence in teaching. We instituted the ABIM Physician Scientist Training Pathway um, and matched our first residents. We're very excited to welcome them. Um, the Alaska Residency, which is the first of its kind nationwide, was launched. And a new Vice Chair for Education, Dr. Ken Steinberg, has appointed. Um, this, again, was directly developed in response to feedback from the department stakeholders during the strategic plan. Dr. Jason Dean um, from Cardiology and Pediatrics co-leads the new Center for Indigenous Health. 
uh, with the mission to improve indigenous health by expanding opportunities for American Indian and Alaska Native pre-medical students, medical students, and academic faculty. And Dr. Fuki Hizama is the inaugural program director for a combined internal medicine, medical genetics, and genomics residency program, which we were so excited to receive approval from ABIM and the Board of Medical Genetics, because it's a dual board, to create a four-year combined residency program. The goal of this is to achieve competence in both specialties and specific expertise in this very, very important focus. I wanna end with, again, engaging everyone to get involved. Um, we cons constantly are looking for volunteers to participate in a work group. You can sign up by our internet and you can send thoughts and suggestions to the leaders of the work groups or the central staff. With this, I wanna, summar I wanna summarize. This has been another year of major transition, growth and progress. As we all know, the challenges remain and the one constant is change. But I feel very strongly that there's no better time to double down on our va value proposition of one department where all members should thrive. We are better together, and I'm very hopeful for our future. With this, I wanna thank all of you. It takes a city, the faculty, the staff, trainee, leadership, the central teams, the strategic plan work groups, our Seattle community, our students, my fellow chairs, our hospital partners, Dean's office partners, and the UW Medicine community. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much for that presentation, Dr. Young. Um, if anyone has questions for Dr. Young, we would be happy to take those. Feel free to submit them through the chat function. Uh, one reminder that I will offer to folks who are putting in for CME credit for today's session is that our activity code is 8821. And you must have done a thorough job, Dr. Young, because I, uh, People are here, stumped. Here, here we have <laughs> a question coming in now. Um, please feel free to keep those coming. But uh, let's see, patient access to medical specialties is limited at UW with long wait times for many specialties. What do you think the Department of Medicine can do um, to support specialist participation in e-consults to improve this access? Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Sarah, for that question. Um, as I said, I think one of the key challenges we're facing is access, access, access. Um, the other challenge is capacity. Um, the other thing, though, that I think um, I mentioned here was with um, the way we do business and the way the reimbursements work, um, we need to be really mindful to continue to get credit for our work and also serve our patients the best way. So we've been looking very carefully in how to provide the best access. And so I'm not sure that e-consult is the answer in any and all cases. Um, so I think that's something we can take offline. So I don't know if specialist part participation in e-consults is the way to go. It might be. We're looking at all avenues. We're trying to really um, branch out, have different ways of addressing access um, and thinking very creatively together. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, the financial transformation has been a major burden on research groups that rely on grants and contracts. Additional administrative support from the provost's office seems appropriate. I think that's more of a comment than a question per se, but if you have anything to comment back. Yes, I think what I would say is that I fully recognize um, all the challenges. Um, uh, we've been hearing it, we've been feeling it, we've been seeing it. Um, it is very evident. Um, I will also say that I think we have been heard and that there are changes underway. Um, I would also uh, direct you to, we have had two recent communications of helping people navigate escalation um, around how to get help and who to turn for help. And then my team is very happy to help navigate those so it gets to the right people in the right time um, because we fully recognize that um, problems have not been solved yet. Thank 
give it just a moment in case anyone is in the process of typing in any more questions. Let's see, what is the larger UW School of Medicine saying these days about Mission Forward? Thank you. And I think this question came from Dan Cabrera. I see it in the chat. Thank you. Um, I think we can say that the Mission Forward piece that is working on efficiency and making our work count has worked. Um, a lot of the Mission Forward pieces have really been about working on things that we should be doing anyway, and we as a system, so revenue cycle, how are the bills being worked, um, who's on point for what. So I think this was much needed and is working. Um, it is not an overarching strategic framework from where to go next. So I think it's working, it's ongoing, and it's much more clinically operational. Um, again, that's why I think it's so important that we have a departmental strategic plan uh, where we're really called out thinking about scholarly work, education, and the well-being. Um, so we keep that front and center. One can't exist without the other. Um, and it's successful. And I think it will help us continue to be successful um, as a department. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat right now. Um, so I think unless you have any sort of final words that you would like to offer to folks, Dr. Young, we can probably wrap things up for the day. Thank you so yeah. much for that presentation. I think that was um, outstanding to hear all the things that have been going on in the department. Well, again, I will just highlight that this is the work done by the department, and I couldn't be more proud to sit here in front of you and present all this progress understanding how much work it has been. So it's been my absolute privilege and pleasure. And thank you for attending today. Yes, thanks everyone for attending today. Um, we look forward to seeing you back for our next Grand Rounds in two weeks.